Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There is a thing going around, supposedly, I don't know, messianic so-called circles. Um, I called them messed up antics. Messed up, M-E-S-S-E-D, up, U-P, A-N-T-I-C-S, messed up antics. Because uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, I guess they're allergic to calling themselves Christians. So they're, you know. Oh, they have a Messiah, all right, but I don't think it's the uh, Jesus of the Bible. But there's uh, something going around that, uh, oh, how do I put this? King Solomon married, some say the Queen of Sheba, others, I don't know. But he married some woman from Ethiopia, could have been the Queen of Sheba, I'm not sure. Queen of the South. I don't know. And had a son by her or children. And he entrusted them to take the Ark of the Covenant to Ethiopia. Hmm. You know, don't keep it in Jerusalem. You know, send it to Ethiopia. And they're claiming it's there to this day, just waiting for the Messiah to show up so they can produce the Ark of the Covenant, and present it to the Messiah. Well, does that sound plausible? Eh. Well, there's a couple of things. One, well, let's take a look at something. So where is the Ark? Uh, well, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 11. Verse 1. And there was given me a reed, like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Forty-two months. That is the length, approximately, of the time of Jacob's trouble. Some people call it the tribulation. Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And one of those two witnesses is going to be Elijah. Absolutely. I did a Bible study on Elijah. Uh, the minor prophets, one of them, says that Elijah will come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The other one is open for debate. Me, I'm kind of leaning towards Enoch because Enoch and Elijah were the only two people in the Bible who never died. Other people think that because of the transfiguration of Jesus, the uh, they had Moses and uh, they had Elijah. Moses was dead. But Elijah never died. And Moses represents the law. He gave, uh, he was given the Ten Commandments, remember? And Elijah represented the prophets. So the law and the prophets are represented um, there. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth, which is approximately 42 months. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. What does a candlestick do? Well, if it's lit, it put, gives off light. And what is that light? Jesus is the light of the world, right? Verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of, the, out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now, remember, Elijah called fire down from the heaven and devoured 200 soldiers of King Ahab. And King Ahab was a bad egg. Uh, he was one of the worst of the worst of the worst. And he was married to 
Jezebel. And I've done studies on Jezebel and Ahab and Elijah and, you know, sometimes I'm wondering, am I running out of material? You know, I'm joking, but yeah. So, uh, his mouth is not going to be a flamethrower, but he does call down fire from heaven and burned up the, uh, the enemy. Elijah also um, struck Israel with three and a half years of drought. So let's go to verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, and it rained not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. Isn't that what happened when uh, Moses was told to... Uh, was he uh, struck the water with the staff, I think, and all the water in Egypt turned to blood. Uh, all right, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. These plagues are going to be just like the plagues in Egypt before Israel was uh, basically kicked out by Pharaoh. Pharaoh got tired of his country being destroyed and said, Get out of here, Moses. I'm sick of looking at you. Well, that's the Bob. That's the Bob commentary anyway. So, uh, verse 7. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast, the beast, that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom, you know, God destroyed Sodom for their sexual practices, which are an abomination, by the way. God made man, and then he made woman to be a companion to man. He made Adam, and then he made Eve. He didn't make Adam, and then Steve. No, sorry. Well, no, I'm not. And Egypt. Egypt had, uh, oh, I don't know, over a dozen satanic gods. They had Ra, R-A. They had Osiris, O-S-I-R-I-S. -I -I they had, um, oh, I forget all of them, but they had a bunch of them. And the Lord didn't say very anything good about Egypt that I know of. So, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where, well, my Lord is Jesus. I don't know about you, but my Lord is Jesus, and he was crucified in Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Hmm, what does that tell you? And all the fools will say, oh, Rome, Rome, Rome. Well, if you're, if you're Christ, your Lord was crucified in Rome. Uh, his name's not Jesus. You, you must have a Pope or something. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer or allow their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Sounds like Christmas time, don't it? Yeah, make them merry and gifts, yeah. And shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Yeah. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Just like Jesus went up in a cloud. Verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. See, there's going to be a remnant of Judah who are going to realize, wow, we've been worshiping the wrong guy. And they're going to give glory to the God of heaven. 
I believe they possibly have salvation. So, yeah. Verse 14. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded. This is the seventh trump. The last one. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. As in ruling and reigning, not water falling from the sky, right? And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God. Who are these four and twenty elders? My guess would be the twelve tribes of Israel, and the twelve apostles. That's my guess. And I got a Bible study on that. So, they fell on their faces, worship God, verse 17, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, rewards to the prophets and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. God's an environmentalist. Those that destroy the earth, God's going to destroy them. Verse 19, here's the punchline. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark. Let's read that again. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. So the ark of his testament is in heaven, people. It's not in Ethiopia. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. I mean, come on, this is just like the plagues of Egypt in the book of Exodus under Moses and Aaron. So the ark of God is in heaven. It's not in Ethiopia. It's not in Jerusalem, to my knowledge. I, you know. So if they find, you know, a an ark in Ethiopia or in Jerusalem, in a cave, or whatever. My opinion, it's most likely fake. And watch out when the you-know-whos, uh, it uh, rhymes with uh, news, like newspaper, and starts with a J. Yeah, put a J in front of that, and it rhymes with news. Uh, yeah, if they find the Ark, an Ark, it's probably a fake that they're trying to deceive the believers that are going to be fooled because of the pre-trib rapture and everything else. So, uh, let's take a look at something. In the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 14, we are told not giving heed, in other words, don't pay attention to you wish fables. You wish, yeah, that's for the censors, people. Not giving heed to you wish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. So, um, and these same people that claim to be mess, messed up antics uh, that refuse to new, use the name Jesus, that refuse to call themselves Christians. Well, they don't because they're not, my opinion. Uh, they claim one of the oldest churches in the world is in Ethiopia. Can you, anybody show me in the New Testament where Paul or anybody else went to Ethiopia? Uh, no. No, 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 no. They, he never went to Ethiopia, to my knowledge, that I can find out. So, did Solomon have a Ethiopian wife and give the Ark of the Covenant to him and run down to Ethiopia? 
Well, I don't know. Let's take a look at uh, what the Lord says about Ethiopia. All right, let's take a look at Second Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 12. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians. Smote, that means stri strike. Uh, if you smote somebody to death, that means you, you, know, you, you hit them and you killed them, right? So the Lord smote the Ethiopians. Are they black, the Ethiopians? I don't know, you know. What's down there now? Now, there's, there's no proof that what's down there now was the same as what was back then. I don't know. You know, they could have intermarried. Uh, they might have looked a lot different. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. But there's a possibility they are the same. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians, black Ethiopians, before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And sorry, black Hebrews, uh, how can Judah be black when they smote the Ethiopians who today are black? Uh, good question. So not sorry, black Hebrews. How about Zephaniah, Z-E-P-H-A-N-I-A-H? Chapter 2, verse 12, God says, Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Huh, so the Lord smote the Ethiopians. They says he's going to be slain by his sword. Wow. How about Ezekiel 30 and verse 5? Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people mingled people mixed mongrels right and chub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword hmm genesis 9 25 and he said cursed be canaan a servant or slave a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren now guess what ethiopia is part of the land where uh, Ham, who was the father of Canaan, uh, settled. So, Genesis 10, 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Put, and Canaan. So, doesn't sound like, uh, doesn't sound like the Lord likes Ethiopia. And yet, some today claim, oh, the Ark of the Covenant is where Solomon let one of his sons of an Ethiopian wife take it there for safekeeping. Yeah, right. I don't think so. Supposedly, they have true copies of the Bible. Uh, I don't think so. So, like I say, Ethiopia was populated by the children of Ham, uh, who was the father of the Canaanites, of which the Lord said, kill them all. Yeah, so, yeah, figure it out, you know. Don't fall for it. You know, if somebody says that uh, one day they say, oh, well, the, you know, we found the Ark of the Covenant. It was in Ethiopia. Uh, no, it's in heaven, just like Revelation chapter 11 says. And you think the people that God says he's going to kill with the sword and smite. Uh, he's going to let them hold the Ark of the Covenant? I don't think so. But, hey, what do I know? I'm just some guy that read the Bible once or twice. So, All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.